Okay, this is a little introduction to the executive branch. If you look at the Constitution, Article 1 is the legislative branch. They make the laws. Article 2 carries out the, the laws. The president, of course, lives in the White House, which is staring straight at you, and he uses the bureaucracy, roughly 1.7 million people who work around the country and the world, to carry out the responsibilities of the executive branch. That, of course, that number does not include the military. The Obamas live right here on the right side. Uh, they also have an, a, a small apartment where uh, Mrs. Obama's mother lives on the third floor. And this is the West Wing where the president's staff works. And of course, they work underground, most of them, and most of them to the right in what's called the Eisenhower Building, also known as the Old Executive Office Building. The East Wing is where Mrs. Obama's team works. And there is somebody you know here with his dad and his wonderful bride and three great children. And that's the entrance on the side of the West Wing that Mr. Obama comes into every day or leaves from. And that was one we got to visit last August. The West Wing, if you look at it, and i got to move this over here, put it in the picture a little bit for you is not very big. The Oval Office here, which sits on the back of the White House, you can see a picture right there, is smaller than the classroom that we have class in every day. And the Roosevelt Room is probably no bigger than our classroom, and that's where the meetings would occur, or the Cabinet Room, also a very small room, but then again the Cabinet only meets a couple times a year. So that the people who work on the West Wing close to the president do not have very big offices with the exception of three, which I believe is the chief of staff. Uh, the second floor, of course, above part of it, part of it's where the president lives, but part of it's the staff, has even smaller offices. But people uh, get cachet from the how close they are to the Oval Office, how close they are to the proximity of the president. So anybody working in the White House, even in the basement without a window, is considered a top job, where the people next door would be a second tier. And you can see the president does get an extra study as well. The vice president also has an area in the West Ring, as well as an office in the old, in the Eisenhower building next door, as well as one in the Capitol, since he is presiding over the Senate. Okay. Couple things, qualification, president, you cannot be president unless you're 35 years old. Not when you're elected, but when you enter office, you have to have resided or lived in the United States for at least 14 years, and you have to be born an American citizen. And that's been a little contentious at times. Mitt Romney's dad was born in Mexico, but a more, born an American citizen. Uh, no one, though, who has ever been president has been born abroad to American presidents, such as I was born abroad to a person on American business, um, but born an American citizen. Maybe one day someone will face that. Term of office was unlimited in the Constitution. George Washington did set the precedent of two terms. FDR was elected four terms. He was barely in office his fourth term before he died. After his death, we passed the 22nd Amendment, which said that no president could go more than one day shy of 10 years, meaning if you're elected twice, you could not uh, be the vice president or the president again. Bill Clinton, for example, and George Bush could never be president or Barack Obama when his term was up because to be elected would mean that he had ha they'd have the possibility of 12 years, and they can't do that. Okay. There are, to remove a president, you, we know this, the House of Representatives must impeach you, a simple majority. Conviction is 67 percent, or 67 of the 100 senators. We have impeached Andrew Johnson, we have impeached Bill Clinton, but we have never convicted anyone. Succession, you can see that based on the Constitution. President of the President, the Vice President, also known as, of course, President of the Senate, that would be Joe Biden. The Speaker of the House, Speaker Boehner. Pro tempore is the longest serving member of the majority party in the Senate. U.S. De Secretary of State would be John Kerry. Treasury Secretary is next, Secretary of Defense. And then it's in an order of importance. 
These, of course, are the original four. Uh, so that when you watch the State of the Union in late January, you will see all the people in the cabinet are there with the exception of one person who's in an undisclosed secret location just in case something happened in the Capitol would still have the president. And the succession is outlined uh, in the 25th Amendment. Uh, there was even, uh, for example, George W. Bush briefly gave up being president because he had to go underneath uh, anesthesia for several hours, and so temporarily Cheney was president. Um, the president actually can also be removed, according to the 25th Amendment, by the Congress. They would have to prove that the president has lost his or her mental faculties and um, would then could then approve it. That has never happened. Uh, but we do have nine presidents who have not finished their terms. Nixon is the one, only one, Richard Nixon, who didn't finish it because of death. Okay, the last thing is the vice president. I'm skipping over the electoral college. I'm going to do that in class. The vice president must meet the standards of the president, 35, 14 years a, re a resident and U.S. born. Uh, and the duties is to preside over the Senate and to break ties in the Senate. And that's it, nothing more. We'll talk about the 12th Amendment in class. That's it.